guys, and welcome to the Christmas special episode of Cooking with Remy. Let's get cooking. Okay guys, so we've been doing Cooking with Remy for quite a few years now, and I am embarrassed to say that this is our first ever Christmas special episode, and I apologize for that. Let me just say, and I was just telling my blog, which by the way, if you guys are watching this right now, go check out my vlog channel because I am vlogging every day for you guys. But my family does the same food for Thanksgiving and Christmas, and we've done that since I was a kid. But I'm so excited for our first ever Christmas with Remy, oh, Christmas with Remy, ah! But I'm so excited for the first ever Christmas Cooking with Remy episode. You guys are gonna absolutely love it. Today we're doing some Korean recipes, some American recipes, and if you guys make the recipes, please be sure to tag me so I can see them. And on today's menu, we're making Korean marinated short ribs, AKA kalbi. Please forgive me for my Korean pronunciation. I don't know how to speak Korean and I'm sad about it. These are such a crowd pleaser. I promise you, if you put them at any dinner, they're gonna go so fast. And it's a really fun way to introduce people to some really good Korean food and Korean culture. Next, we're really gonna focus on the sauce actually. I've been making this a ton lately, but it's my hot honey miso butter that you can put on anything. Today, we're doing carrots and green beans. I put it on shishito peppers, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, anything. Then we're gonna make some delicious scallops Olives, potatoes, which are one of my favorite side dishes to ever exist of the potato variety. Then we're gonna make the most delicious garlic butter rolls. I've been making these for every party or just like little dinner that I've been throwing and people go crazy for them and I had to share them with you guys. And then last but not least, we're making a Christmas classic and we're making what a lot of people call Christmas crack. I just call it delicious saltine crackers covered in toffee and chocolate and it's amazing and you're gonna love it. So on that note, I'm hungry, let's get cooking. All right, we're gonna start with the main star of the show, which is the kalbi. If you guys have never tried these before, they are truly, I think, one of the best Korean dishes. Obviously, since dating Cal, Cal has been introduced to a lot of different Korean cuisine, and he, by far, says this is his favorite ever, and everyone else that I introduce it to loves it. Always pointing at himself behind the camera. These are marinated short ribs, and so the cut of meat that you wanna get, you know, like an American cooking, like a braised short rib, like it's like a chunk of meat with like a bone in the middle? This is the same cut of meat, but they actually slice it differently. So they actually come really long and thin. And I believe this is called an LA style cut, but basically it's just like a long flat piece. And then the bones, instead of being thick and chunky, are just like sliced, sliced, sliced like that. I don't know if that makes sense, but if you go to an Asian grocery store, you can definitely grab these. And a lot of times they'll actually come marinated already. I have started to marinate them myself. And when I tell you guys it is so good, you're gonna wanna make this at home. Here is the cut of meat up close if you guys wanna see. Also, if you can see all the fat marbling in here, short ribs are a very fatty, piece of meat, which makes them so delicious. So I'm gonna place them into a large bowl. Today for this recipe, I'm doing three and a half to four pounds of meat, which is a lot of meat. You don't have to do that much. You can half it, you can third the recipe, whatever you wanna do. I just know that my family goes crazy for these, so I like to make a lot, and then it makes great leftovers too. As I said, this is a lot of short ribs. It's a big recipe, so I divided it into two bowls, and now this is a step that is imperative. We're going to fill each bowl with cold water. Make sure it's cold, not hot. We don't wanna start cooking this. We want it to be cold. And the water's gonna help dry out any impurities, any of the blood. You'll see it'll kind of get murky in there. I know it sounds a little yucky, but it's really, really important for a really nice, delicious end result. All right, now I'm gonna let these sit in the water for like 10 to 20 minutes. And in the meantime, let's get working on the marinade. We need a food processor, or you can use a blender if you want. And we're gonna blend up one onion, about eight cloves of garlic. You can do more or less if you want. And then a Korean pear. Now, if you guys have never tried a pear, or it's called pear, in Korean. It's almost like a hybrid of an apple and a pear. It's crunchy, it's sweet, it's really refreshing. I love them cold. I like mixing them with salty things. I like eating them on their own. It's so good. So in our food processor, we're gonna add in our garlic. Garlic. We're gonna chop our onion and throw it in there. Now I wash and we're gonna cut and peel our pear. All right, our pear is chopped. We're gonna add this in. Now we're gonna put the lid on and pulse this until it becomes a puree. Totally forgot to add in my ginger, but no worries, we're gonna do that now. I'm just gonna throw this in and puree it. I will say ginger is very strong, so use less than you think. I've done some batches where I put too much and I feel like the ginger really overpowers, so be careful. Also, I'm gonna show you a little life hack for fresh ginger. You just cut off your little piece and then you wanna take a spoon to peel it. And then you just use the spoon to peel the outside. And this is a really safe, easy way to peel it. It works really well. And you know, you're not putting yourself in harm's way with a knife. So this is the piece of ginger that I'm gonna use. Again, about an inch. And we're gonna throw her in there. 
there. Perfect. All right, now that that's all blended, we can make the rest of our marinade. So we're gonna start by adding in our pureed mixture into our Tupperware. Throw that chunky goodness in. Mm-hmm. We have a mixture here of soy sauce and rice wine vinegar. We're gonna pour that in. Then I'm gonna add in plum syrup. I think this adds amazing sweetness. I got this at the Korean grocery store. If you don't wanna go get that though, you can add sugar, you can add honey, you can do really whatever you want, but the plum syrup adds some nice depth to it. Four tablespoons of this. One of my favorite ingredients ever, three tablespoons of toasted sesame oil. This adds so much flavor. Then we're gonna add in a third cup of light brown sugar that's been packed. Ooh, right in there. This is optional, but I like adding some gochujang. I'm gonna do like a tablespoon and a half or so. This is Korean red pepper paste. It's so delicious. It adds like a really nice kick to the short ribs. I will say it's not like super spicy. It's kind of like a sweet spicy. So you kind of get the spice at the back of the throat when you eat them. You don't need to add this in if you don't want. Traditionally, it doesn't have it, but I like it. And then last but not least, just some salt and pepper. I'm gonna do a couple teaspoons of each, but you know, measure with your heart just to taste. There's a lot of salt already going on in here with the soy sauce, so you don't need too much. This is a wonderful sweet, salty, aromatic mixture. I know the pear and the brown sugar and the syrup sounds a little interesting for meat, but I promise it adds so much delicious sweetness and caramelization to the ribs that you can't get anywhere else. Mmm, it smells so good. And now that everything's mixed together, we can take our short ribs and just add them back in here. Here's our ribs after sitting in the water for about 20 minutes or so. If you can see the water is murky, a lot of blood and impurities have come out. We're just gonna drain this. And now you can see the ribs are a lot less red and more pink. And I'm just gonna throw them right into the marinade. You don't have to dry them. You can just put them right in. It's really easy and really quick. Last but not least, I have four green onions here that I've chopped into like inch and a half pieces. We're going to throw these in and then mix it all up. Now our short ribs are ready to sit in the fridge and soak up all these delicious flavors. Leave them in the fridge for at least three to four hours before you cook or preferably overnight or even longer, to be honest, if you can make them last that long. Also, if you don't like short ribs, you can really put this marinade on any sort of cut of meat or even tofu, chicken, vegetables, shrimp, whatever. I do have a little bit of a special treat today and you do not have to do this, but if you guys haven't seen it already, check out episode one of Remy's restaurant. But I bought this Wagyu steak at Costco for that and then we ended up not using it and I've been waiting for the perfect time to use it. And I feel like Korean short rib marinated Wagyu sounds like a treat. So I'm just gonna slice these up and put them in the bottom. We're gonna cook that up later. Hello guys. Okay, it's actually been four hours. We're just about to finish wrapping up filming this episode, which means the meat is ready. Now I will say I made a batch of four pounds maybe a week ago or so, maybe less than that to prep for this episode so that I could show you guys the end result. This is all that's left. And I had to tell Cal to not cook this for this video. That's how fast this goes in this house. So yes, I have a few here that have been sitting in the marinade. I'm gonna actually cook these up and I'm gonna let the rest sit overnight. It's super easy to cook these up. You can throw them on a grill. You can do them on the stove. I personally am just gonna do the stove. I will say you can get a little bit smoky. So make sure you open up your windows or turn your fan on and you truly just cook it for maybe like four minutes aside you will see when it's done. It's gonna get a nice, delicious, caramelized, crispy, kind of charred exterior, and that's it. It's delicious. Let's cook this up, and then let's make the Wagyu for everybody that's here. Okay guys, that is how you cook up Korean short ribs. I would make the plate really pretty, but everybody's fiending to come try it. I also just wanted to know, obviously we made a lot. You can keep it in the fridge up to like maybe a week or so. And then if you have more leftover, I'll just put them in separate bags and freeze them in like single servings and then pull them out, let them thaw in the fridge and then cook them up for dinner. Growing up, my mom and dad would make kalbi like truly like once a week or so. So it's a big part of my childhood. It's super nostalgic for me. It's so delicious. And also how you serve it is you cut them up into thirds and you eat the whole thing you eat all the gristle around the bone. It's delicious. Does everybody want to come try with me? Everyone's up and walking over already. <laughs> mm -hmm. DCD tofu helped over. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna rip it off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next up, I made kalbi marinated wagyu. Woo! <laughs> Thank you so much. You're oh so my. welcome. Is it good? I have to imagine it's good. Oh my god. So good. Mm -hmm. My two favorite things. Wagyu and Remy. Okay, moving on. If you guys have been watching my vlogs lately, you know that I have been obsessed with this hot honey miso butter that I made up that is seriously so good. If you put it on a TV remote, like I would eat it. And it's really easy to do. Today, I'm gonna put it on some roasted carrots and roasted green beans, but you can do it on truly whatever vegetable or meat or literally anything that you wanna eat. All right, on our little baking sheets, we have here these beautiful colored carrots and these green beans. Again, you can really use whatever vegetable that you want. To roast these, I'm simply just going to coat them in some olive oil and then simply just some salt and some pepper 
I'm gonna throw these into a 425 degree oven and the carrots are gonna take significantly longer than the green beans. I'll cook the green beans for like seven to 10 minutes depending on how you like your green beans done. And then the carrots are gonna go in for about 20 to 25 minutes. So we're just gonna melt down a half a cup of butter. Now that our butter has melted, we're gonna add in our miso. I have three quarters of a cup of white miso here and we're just going to place that in and whisk it around. Miso adds so much umami and delicious flavor to the butter. It's kinda got like a salty flavor. So to balance that out, we're gonna also add in hot honey. This adds in really nice spicy flavor and a nice sweetness. You can use regular honey if you don't like spice, but it really is just like the most minimal amount that's so good. And we're just gonna mix all these together. You might wanna break out your whisk again to mix up all that miso properly. There we go. Now we're gonna add in a teaspoon of salt. Now, this little burner that I'm using is not fabulous to bring things to a boil, so I'm gonna switch over to the big stove. So once it comes to a boil, reduce to low heat. Let it sit for like two to three minutes or so, and then your sauce is pretty much ready to go. As you let it sit, it will thicken, but seriously, you guys, the sauce is so good. I cannot stress that enough. Usually, to be honest, I just throw it on the vegetables as is, and I call it a day. But obviously, this is Christmas. This is the holiday season. We wanna go extra and above. So for a nice crunchy element, I'm also going to fry up some garlic. All you're gonna do is either slice them with a knife very thinly or use a mandolin very carefully to get little thin slices. And we're just gonna throw those garlic chips into some hot oil and you wanna keep those moving. They cook really, really quickly and they go so quickly from crispy to burnt. And once it turns a golden brown color, you're gonna take them off the heat and just drain them on some paper towels. And then for our crunchy almond topping, you can do any nut or again, just omit this if you want to. I took sliced almonds and I'm just gonna dry roast them in a pan to get nice and toasted and delicious. And then once we're almost done, I'm gonna do a nice drizzle of hot honey to tie those flavors in together, throw them on a plate and then I put mine in the freezer for like a couple minutes or so just so they can harden. I'm gonna break that, top it on top of the vegetables with the crispy garlic, a little flaky salt, and you are all done. All right, we have the vegetables done. We have the green beans. We have the carrots. I'm not normally a carrot fan, but I will say I sometimes like a roasted carrot. So we're gonna do a taste test of both. I'm being brave today. First, I'm gonna try my green beans. Mmm, I do love a green bean. You gotta get a little bite of everything. Mmm, there's honestly so many flavors going on. They're sweet, they're salty, they're garlicky. Now for my carrot. Honestly, it's really good. <laughs> Garlic stuck in the throat. It doesn't even taste like a carrot. It just tastes like sweet deliciousness. Let's bring in our taste testers. Am I gonna finish this carrot? Ooh, the carrot is actually so uh Uh-huh. This is my first vegetable in like a year. Wow. You like? Yay! I finished my carrot. Wait, I'm so glad you guys like it. God bless. All right guys, next up we are moving on to honestly a very foolproof recipe that I swear will be the best garlic bread you've ever tried in your life. It's so easy to make, it's so delicious. So let's get into it. Let me just say, it's Christmas. These recipes all require a lot of butter, but this one especially, and I've actually tried to cut back the butter before on a batch and it was still delicious, but obviously just not as good. So if you want it to be decadent and luxurious and delicious for the holidays, go with all the butter. So I'm gonna use a cup and a half of butter and we're gonna melt this in the microwave. The butter is melted and now obviously if it's garlic bread, we need a lot of garlic. You can do anywhere from like eight to 12 cloves. I have like 11 here and I'm gonna use my little trusty chopper guy because he just helps keep my fingers clean and not from smelling too crazy. But you can use a knife obviously and I'm just gonna mince this garlic up. Now I'm gonna add my minced garlic into the butter and you want right between like a rough chop and a fine chop. Next up, to give it that really garlicky flavor, I've started adding in some of this garlic spread dip. You can get this at Trader Joe's or a bunch of different grocery stores carry it or you can make it yourself. It's basically just like garlic and oil mixed together. I believe it's a Mediterranean thing. It's amazing. I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of this into the butter so you just get so much garlic flavor in every bite. And then the hot butter will just melt this in and we stir very gently. Next up, we're gonna add in a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. This is grated Parmesan cheese. Obviously you can add more if you want more of a cheesy flavor. We have our onion powder, garlic powder, salt and pepper, as well as some of our fresh chopped parsley. Hello all, welcome to the garden. It is absolutely flourishing right now. Go watch my vlog if you want a full garden tour, but we're out here because, here we go. I need a good amount of parsley for some of my recipes, so I'm just ripping these off right here. Got some flat leaf. Ooh, oh, it smells like kabuli. Mm. We got all of our parsley. Mmm, it smells so good. And then save a little bit for garnish. All right, now that our butter mixture is ready, we're gonna take our rolls. I'm using these King's Hawaiian, Hawaiian sweet rolls. This is the giant pack, so there's 24 of them in here. Normally, I'm not the biggest fan of a sweet roll, and either my tastes are changing or the juxtaposition between the sweet, chewy bread and the cheesy, garlicky butter is so good. So I'm just gonna pop these open, place the baby down. 
gentle. Then we wanna take a bread knife and we're basically going to cut where all the little parts already are, but not all the way through. So you wanna cut like three quarters of the way down, meaning I'm gonna cut horizontally and vertically and they're very delicate, so be very gentle. So each bread is still conjoined, but we can get all the garlic butter in there. Then we're just gonna take our garlic butter cheesy mixture and just get it into every little crevice. You can't mess this up. You can be as messy as you want with it. Again, I know these are decadent, lots of garlic, lots of butter. Again, you can cut back and I've tried to before, but they're just so much better this way. And again, it's the holidays. Okay, so I've stuffed each little crevice with our garlic and our butter. And now all I'm gonna do is use a brush with the leftover butter and just brush the top of each bread. And then we're gonna bake these at 350 degrees for eight to 10 minutes. And they smell amazing already. Just wait. And just like that, our cheesy garlic bread rolls are done. Truly guys, make a couple packs of these or one pack of these for your holiday dinner. Let everyone come and like pick the piece that they want. It's to die for. I'm gonna go for an end piece because the cheesy garlicky, oh my God, the butter is like soaked into the bread. I just have to try it right now. Oh, mm, with like the caramelized bottom. It's so good, it's so garlicky. You can't go wrong. I topped it with a little bit more extra Parmesan cheese, a little bit of chopped parsley, and that's it. Anybody want one? Uh-huh. Oh. oh my. <laughs> Oh my God, what's this? Brad? Yay, I'm glad you like it. Oh my God. Yeah, Thank they're just you. so pillowy. <laughs> Thank you You're so, so much. You're so welcome. We have another taste tester. It's the best garlic bread ever. All right, guys, we are moving on to scalloped potatoes. I don't know about you guys, but one of my fondest childhood memories was making scalloped potatoes out of a box where the potatoes came in like chip form almost. Do you guys remember that? Is that still a thing? I loved them so much, but this I will say takes it to the next level. Scalloped potatoes are definitely a little bit more of a labor intensive dish versus like mashed potatoes or something, but it's worth it every time. So let's make it. So I already started by caramelizing three shallots and a few garlic cloves behind me. I also already mandolin my potatoes. To Today I'm using golden potatoes. You can use whatever potato you want, but definitely the starchier the better. If you don't have a mandolin, you can just use a knife, but if you use a mandolin, be very careful. I like a mandolin because it's really quick and easy, and you also get nice, thinly sliced, uniform pieces. But whatever you do, be careful. Now back at the stove, we're gonna start with the cheese sauce. So I've got a saucepan here over the heat. We're gonna start by adding our butter, and this mixed with some flour is going to create the base for our sauce. It's called a roux. All right, while mixing the butter, I'm gonna add in a little bit of flour, by a little bit of flour and we're gonna keep mixing this. You wanna mix all the clumps out and then also we're gonna cook this for a couple minutes so that it gets rid of that floury, raw flour taste. Also noting I have this over low heat. After a couple minutes, the flour taste will be gone and you can see it's a nice thick consistency. We're gonna add in our sauteed shallot and garlic and then we're just gonna mix that around and then over medium low heat, we're gonna whisk in our chicken broth. Make sure it's nice and clump free and then our milk and heavy whipping cream followed by our chicken bouillon powder, garlic powder, onion powder, Italian seasoning, fresh parsley, salt, pepper, and then mix that all together. Then we're gonna add in half of our cheese, whisk it all together, and let the cheese melt and the sauce thicken up. All right, I'm gonna turn the heat up to medium. I'm gonna let the sauce come together. As you can see, the cheese is melting. It's getting nice and thick. And once it reaches this consistency, you're ready for the next step. Now is when I like to taste to see if it needs anything else. And it definitely needs a little more salt and pepper. So I add a little more in and it's ready to go. Look at that thick, cheesy goodness. All right, now it is time to assemble our scalloped potatoes. That was definitely the hardest part, but truly it smells and tastes so good, you guys. We're now gonna layer our potatoes and our cheese. And you can decide if you wanna do it in thirds or fourths or however many layers you wanna do. Here I I've greased a nine by 13 baking dish and we're just going to start with our potatoes. I'm gonna add a layer, sauce on top of that. Potatoes, sauce on top of that. Potatoes, sauce on top of that. As many times as you want. You also do not have to be perfect with this at all. You can be as meticulous or as lazy as you wanna be with it. Now, no matter how many layers of potatoes you do, you always wanna finish with the sauce on top. You really can't mess up this dish, I promise you. And then last but not least, of course, we have to top it with cheese. I have here some shaved Parmesan. You can never have too much cheese with your potatoes, especially for the holidays. And then we're gonna top with the white cheddar, regular cheddar. Cal's family from the Midwest is coming over for Christmas and you best bet I'm making these and it's gonna be a lot of cheese on top. 
All right, our potatoes are ready to go into the oven at 350 for 40 to 45 minutes. And then I'm gonna hit mine with the broiler for a few minutes after two to get that nice crusty top. I will see you guys when it's done and it's gonna be amazing. All right, the potatoes are out of the oven. It smells divine. I'm gonna scoop in like you would at Christmas dinner. I got a big spoon here. Just gonna slice in and the potato should be nice and soft. All the sauce is oozing out. Sorry, oozing was a gross word, but look at those potatoes. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Mm, it's so hot. I really love the herbs. I feel like it adds a lot of flavor to it and kind of like cuts that creaminess. It is to die for. All right, last but not least, we are going to make Christmas crack. I'm sure a lot of you guys have made this already, but if you have not tried it, it is so, so good. I'm gonna be honest, my recipe is not very different from any other one that you could find online, but whatever recipe you use, it is so good, I promise you. When I first heard about this years ago, I thought it sounded crazy, but really the flavors work so well together. It's a saltine cracker, some toffee on top, chocolate, and then toppings if you'd like. To make this, it's super, super easy, just on the stove in a saucepan, I'm just gonna melt together some butter, and once that's all melted, I'm gonna add in my brown sugar, I like to add a little extra flavor, so I do a little bit of yellow cake extract, totally not necessary if you don't have it, and a little salt, and I mix that together, bring it to a boil, and it's gonna become a nice, thick, toffee, caramel-like substance. On a parchment-lined cookie sheet, I'm just gonna lay all my saltines together one by one. They're gonna all be touching. We're almost making like a giant piece of bark with this. When the toffee is done, you're just gonna pour the hot toffee on top of the saltines and kind of smooth it out with a spatula. You want every saltine to be covered and delicious. And then after that, while the toffee's still hot, you're just gonna pour on chocolate. You can do white chocolate, semi-sweet, dark chocolate, chocolate. I like semi-sweet. Ooh, or milk would be good too. I choose semi-sweet because I feel like it's just a nice flavor with like the toffee. It's not too sweet. And then actually the heat from the toffee is going to melt the chocolate. So after like a minute or so of waiting, you're just going to take that same spatula, smooth the chocolate off on top of the toffee. And then from there, you can top with whatever you'd like. I personally am a sprinkles girl, but you could do like Oreo cookies. You could leave it plain, flaky salt, whatever you want. And then all you have to do is just throw it into the fridge or the freezer. If you do the freezer, maybe like 10, 15 minutes. Fridge, maybe like 30. And then you just break it into pieces and you have the most delicious Christmassy toffee chocolate bark of your life. All right, guys, as you can see, it is pitch black outside. It is nighttime. We've been going long for this episode, but this is our finished Christmas bark. It looks so good. I just broke it up into little pieces. This also makes a wonderful gift to give your family, your friends, your neighbors for the holiday season. It's really inexpensive to make, and I swear, so delicious. I kept a little bite-sized piece for me here. The layers, insane. Mmm, the toffee is amazing. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the Cooking with Remy Christmas Spectacular. Again, don't forget to check out my vlog channel, Rem Life. I'm vlogging every day over there up until Christmas, and then I will see you guys in the new year. But until then, if you want more fun cooking content, check out the Cooking with Remy Instagram and Miss Remy Ashton on TikTok and the vlog channel, and I'll see you guys next year. Bye!